cheese, dude. That stinks. Dude, stop cutting the cheese. Jacob. When you cut the cheese, Jacob, it stinks really, really bad. It's so... Yeah. Welcome back, all you eggs and all you shinies, to the 1313 Podcast. This is the most mediocre podcast in the Star Wars universe. I'm Jackson. I'm Jacob. And I'm Tommy. Welcome back, all you eggs and all you shinies. We are so glad to have you back here today. I'm Tommy. I'm Jacob. <laughs> I'm Jackson. That didn't mean to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. How is everyone doing this week? Are we, I'm, I am doing pretty darn okay. This doing week. good. Class is about to start for us, so you know the vibe. Class I starts tomorrow for me and Jackson. I already started classes, and um, I I go to school with some interesting people. <laughs> you gotta tell the story. You gotta tell. Which the story. one? Say, Which the, one? Uh, throw the, up. the puke story. Uh, uh, um, I'm um, trigger warning. Puke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got a couple stories from the first two days of school already. So my first interaction with another student. Um, I'm sitting, I have a communications class, and um, this kid did not know how to communicate. So, um, huh? I'm sitting in class. Uh, I'm in the back of the room. It's like a giant lecture hall. Tons of seats. This kid could have picked any seat, but he decides to sit next to me. And he sits down, I'm like, well, might as well make the best of it. I'm like, hey man, what's up? My name's Jacob. And I put out my hand to shake his hand. He comes at me with the same hand. <laughs> <laughs> immediately i'm like oh no and this kid talks like this and um he had a pencil in his other hand so he went to switch hands but he dropped the pencil i haven't heard this story and he it's went to either. pick up the pencil and he hit his head on the desk on his way down to pick up the pencil picks up the pencil and then gave me the limpest handshake i've ever received in my life so i automatically have zero respect for this person <laughs> Next, um, the school has like this like glass sky bridge that goes from like one building to like where the library usually is. The library is under construction right now. So it just leads outside the library. And uh, I was walking in there and there's this girl with a service dog. And I was like, ah, oh, she has a service dog. Okay, whatever. And it just got done raining. So this girl's holding an umbrella. And then out of nowhere, she gets like from me to the camera away and then takes her umbrella and goes, Mr. Yip, 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 yip with the umbrella. <laughs> 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 right in my face and I'm taking it back and she just goes sorry it keeps going <laughs> so I only assumed that she had Tourette's either that or she was just really weird and then <laughs> finally um I had a class today it was intro to oceanography and uh there's this one girl sitting in the back she's wearing a um no it was like what uh no justice no peace shirt and then she had like this like light blue velvet short skirt that like came down to like mid thigh and all of a sudden i'm just paying attention it's like halfway through the class it sounds like somebody's just pouring water on the ground and to my surprise to my chagrin i turn around and she's like this and there's just milk spewing out of her hands <laughs> it is vomit and it's going everywhere like a puke fountain and um <laughs> I'm just sitting there, and I'm, and I'm awestruck by the sight I just saw on my second day at this university. And this is what she does, this is what she does. I threw up. Like, yeah, no, no, no crap. We all saw you, we all heard it. We, it got on people. We are very aware that you just arced vomit across the room. So, um, and then the teacher just goes, oh no, well, do what you gotta do. So she gets up and she leaves. And when she stands up, you can hear more pukes spilling on the floor because we're sitting on that. You know, she had to shake out what was in her hand. You know? And then, <laughs> yeah. And, and, then she, and then she left. You know, then, she isn't oh, no. catching anything in those hands. No, right? it, no, she was like this, trying to keep it all in. <laughs> so it sprayed everywhere. <laughs> and then, oh, and it was funny because as she was doing it, the guy sitting next to her was like, <laughs> trying, to, trying to keep it together and i'm sitting there trying not to laugh at the whole situation and then i had another class today and guess who it is it's puke girl and she's wearing the same clothes wah, wah, wah. so this is my second day of classes at this place i will keep you guys updated as 
the days go by, what other rigmarole happens at this university? If I can quickly interject as well, no. we're not going to talk about the giveaway. Oh, well, we got, we got okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We're finally there. We did it. We were on a stream we're on so Lucas excited. Monsters YouTube channel with Skywalker Hendrix, and we hit our 500 subscriber goal. So because we hit it before September started, for all you audio listeners and for all you people who really only tune in for the podcast, we're finally doing the giveaway. Um, we're giving away both figures. And Jacob, how do you get entered into the giveaway? Mm -hmm. So there's already a really mediocre video that went up on the day or the couple days after um, that explains everything. But in short, um, in order to win, you have to make sure that you are subscribed to the 1313 podcast. You have to check out our Instagram where there is a post. Make sure that you tag two friends in the comments of said post. Make sure that you're following us on the Instagram. Make sure you like it. Share that post around. And then once you've done all that, come back to that video, the previous video that's up on the channel at this point, I believe, and type in the comments done on the vi dedicated video for the giveaway because that's where we're pulling the winners. So uh, good luck to everybody. We're going to be doing a Wheel of Death uh, on Tuesday. Tuesday, August 30th. Yes. yes. So if you want to win those figures, make sure that you're in. Also, if you are in our Patreon, you get already have another uh, entry into the Wheel you of Death. You have a second entry. So yeah. you already have one before you do everything. So you're going to have two chances to win the figure. Mm -hmm. So um, and, that counts, our patrons. and that counts for all patrons, no matter what tier you are. Yes. So um, to those who support us on Patreon, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And to all of you that helped us get to 500 subs. Thank you very much. And we're continuing to actually skyrocket now. Yeah. So yeah. Up. Wow. We're almost to 600 yeah. already. If I can interject one more time, speaking yeah. of patrons, just want to remind all of our patrons that at the end of this month, we're going to be giving away the 13th Battalion Clone Trooper. We mentioned this before. It's not in the States yet. It's super dope. It's a really cool trooper. If you want it, you have to join our Patreon. Yeah. In the Gungan Boss yes, tier. the Gungan Boss tier. Uh, 13, 13 a month. Um, yeah, make sure that you join it if you want to get your hands on an exquisite figure, in my opinion. Um, and it's one from Taiwan. Yeah, yes, it, has it has the factory the, sticker. It's a sticker yes, it on the, the back to let you know that it's on authentic. Taiwan variant, Taiwan Chase variant. <laughs> <laughs> like the regional Got Pokemon. Got the Funko Collector salivating Pokemon now. Ooh, He's the yeah. Chase. <sighs> regional Pokemon <laughs> and Pokemon Go. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's let's talk some Star Wars. We got I got a couple things I got to talk about. What do you some want to Star talk Wars about? news? <clears throat> yeah, there is. Um, so I let Jacob know this, but Jackson, I don't know if you heard that the uh, Kotor remake, uh, the Knights of the Old Republic remake, got canceled. Got canceled. Yes, but I did see that. It was wait, handed, wait, 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 it was wait. handed off to another development team. So oh. it's continuing now. I don't know. Uh, if you want more information on this, go check mm. out Star Wars Split Screen, one of our friends who we've had on our Have a Chat series. Um, good buddy across the pond. He has been covering the whole debacle and covering a lot of uh, the facts and the rumors and the speculation and all the mm. stuff going on with that. But yes, um, Lucas Lucasfilm Games did give KOTOR over to a different development team. So I'm not sure... What this means, I think maybe they're probably hoping for more results, quicker results from this other team, um, because I know that the first team that was working on it had little to no progress on the mm. game after they were given oodles and oodles of money say, to work on it. Because they I gave them a demo, and then Lucas said, "What is what is this? Uh, this is garbage." <laughs> I kind of saw the headline saying that Kodor was canceled from my phone. I was like, "Huh, take that." But that's just being pessimistic about not really growing up playing the old republic and not really caring about it to begin with but like maybe it'll get better i was results. i was a little too young for the old republic games yeah. but i was old enough to appreciate the beautiful cinematic trailers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly i i tried to play it on mobile and i realized that it, the combat was due to garbage and i lost my interest immediately so uh that's interesting mm -hmm. i was good like and it was funny it was like dang it got canceled and they made a new animatic and everything they um, really did. They were really trying to hype it up with that animatic too, talking about this new like DLC and stuff for the game. <laughs> I know, I know. It's nothing like the game itself, the cinematic trailers. But then, um, remember Star Wars Eclipse? Yeah. yeah. And then that's not coming out till like 2027, 
2028. Wasn't it already predicted to be that long though, originally? No, like we got the trailer and then a week later the dev team was like, hey guys, comes out in like eight years. Everyone was uh, like, oh. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna be it is Gamescon right now. That's why we're getting a bunch of game news, I think. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Makes okay. Lot of sense. But why release news about a game that isn't gonna be like done that far down the line? How the heck did you create that amazing looking cinematic thing where it looks real to the point that you're like, oh yeah, the game's not gonna be out for another eight years. Well, well you one's know, like one's made in a game engine, one's a complete computer animation. It's true. They they also did it to generate conversation and to get people thinking about it. You're always gonna remember the Star Wars Eclipse trailer because it was so cool looking. So later on when you hear news, oh, Star Wars Eclipse, Star Wars Eclipse, you're gonna think about that trailer. And because you liked the trailer so much, it's gonna make you have a positive connotation toward the game. And keeping yeah. on the topic of true, gaming news, true. keeping on the topic of gaming news, the uh, developers of Star Wars Hunters finally came out and said that the game was gonna be uh, postponed until next year instead of oh, leading us on. Holy it. cow, another year? Mm -hmm. There have been people playing the beta for like, I've been playing the beta for like the past and six months, months and months now. So it's like, geez, dude. I, I thought think, it was out because people were playing No, no, it. no. I think wow. though, I think the main reason why it keeps getting pushed back because they're adding like events and like different new skins and things like that to the game. I think it's, they're pushing it back further and further because of the Switch port because it's going to be on Switch and it's going to be on mobile. Mm. And I think Switch games have a higher quality like standard that it has to meet rather than a mobile game. Okay. Because a mobile game, you can just throw it up and it's all right. So I think they're stuck trying to get everything sorted out on the Switch, but it looks like it's going to play better on the Switch. That's good. So I'm very excited for it to actually yeah. come Wasn't out on that. Wasn't there a new Switch supposed to be coming out at the end of this year? It, Wasn't it, that there, like a rumor? Yeah, there's a rumor that, because um, we know that the, the new Legend of Zelda game is supposed to be revealed uh, or supposed to come out at the end of this year. Um, people are speculating that a new Switch model or like the next Nintendo console is going to come out alongside it because it seems like it's going to be like bigger. It seems like it might have ray tracing in it, like different uh, like graphics upgrades, play upgrades. So um, we'll have to see. I haven't been keeping too close a contact on Gamescon though. Uh, Neither have I. All I know, I know PlayStation showed off that they're doing like a PlayStation Pro controller. But like, hmm. I was trying to think of what else that there was. There's nothing really I can think of. I, I was really hoping we would hear some news about that that shooter game coming from Respawn Entertainment. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is true, actually. Um, there's a Star Wars first person shooter game that Respawn is making. And, and I don't know if any of you are a fan of Titanfall, but I love Titanfall and Best I love game. Titanfall 2 even more. And um, they they really don't have a, a track record that has really any bad games mm -hmm. on, on their list. I mean, and most of those people are actually from Infinity Ward, the dudes who made, you know, COD 4, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, you know, it was not until Call of Duty Ghosts when a lot of those guys left the company, mm -hmm. so including um, one of the CEOs, I believe, one of the dudes that were way up at the top. Mm -hmm. This is back in like 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, so I mean, these guys have, have a real passion for games and they showed up with Titanfall and Titanfall 2. I hope. Um, unless you're an incel that owns a PlayStation instead of an Xbox, you wouldn't have been able to experience those games. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> I hope, uh, I really hope that if they do come out with a new Star Wars shooter, it plays more like Titanfall because I hated how Battlefront played like Battlefield. I, I liked it because I, I loved, loved I had just come off of Battlefield 1, which yep. was a game that I loved oh, yeah. so much. And it was just, oh, it's Star Wars Battlefield. Mm -hmm. Well, coming off Battlefield 1, it was fine. But then we had that deficit for a while like where I didn't play it pretty much at all. And you know, and every time that we were playing anything with like blasters and things like that, I'm due to garbage. Um, but then Warzone came out and I found out, I was like, oh, I find the Call of Duty engine for shooting just a lot more natural than I do the, I think it's cause the Call of Duty um, engine, everything feels like it has weight to it. Everything like changes where, yeah. Yeah. Like, depending, depending on what weapons that you're engine, not the depending on, it doesn't matter, it's Call of Duty. Um, depending on Battlefield, uh, everything is the same where it's just kind of like, uh, uh, like robotic. It doesn't feel natural. And I, I always play like garbage when I'm playing a Battlefield game, but COD, I'm always doing decently. And, I just, I was talking to Latendi in the Discord. Um, I was playing games, I think 
last night. I was with there him. Too. I was playing. Bat- we were playing Battlefront. I I think I was I was telling him, like I know like everybody said it a million times, but just like what was EA thinking when they when they discontinued support of Battlefront Two and they just were so eager to go all hands on deck on the next Battlefield title, and in the, in title doing sucks. that. They, they fired and had people resign from DICE altogether, not just from the Battlefront 2 team, but all these dudes that were working together and were making this awesome passion project, they all went their separate ways. So now you have this, this whatever's left of DICE with all these new people thrown in the mix, and then they throw together Battlefield 2042. And if you like the game, that's good for you. But for me, I absolutely just... It, it was very generic. I love Battlefield 2042. If I'm bored, I just boot it up and I just play it. I love it so I mean, much. I don't know if it's because you're on next gen and I'm on current gen. It is because gen. I'm on next gen and you need to get the next gen console. But, I mean, dude, it's like I sit here and I play this game and nothing feels unique about it. Nothing feels special to me about Battlefield 2042. Battlefield like, what do you one, think? Battlefield 1 was a better Battlefield game. Battlefield 1 Cause like, was, was probably, to me, my favorite Battlefield. Because that's the thing. Battlefield 2042 um, feels like Battlefield Bad Company, just like, I don't know, with a bigger map, but like <clears throat> without the personality that Bad Company had. It just feels like uh, like if Battlefield had a generic game, that would be it. That's what it feels it's, like. It does. There's there's nothing to me that is special. And then they're like, oh, but we, we included the weather stuff. It's like it barely affects the gameplay. I got the all. dust storms are pretty cool. Whoa, oh, you yeah. can't see. Yeah, it looks like Jacob. <laughs> Says the fellow who doesn't play the game. I did play the game <laughs> and I didn't like it. So that's why I stopped playing it. I just, uh, I think, I think it's just such a disservice that Battlefront got discontinued because there were plans for Battlefront. They, there was a next gen release planned for Battlefront 2. And it would have, I mean, the player base right before the game was discontinued support. Was that right its ar- highest? It's right a- around Christmas time, Battlefront 2, a three-year-old game, had as many players as the new Call of Duty title. It had numbers that rivaled Call of Duty, the brand new game that people get every single year. Mm-hmm. And it, it had numbers that rivaled and even exceeded its launch numbers. Yeah. The player base was huge, and they just they just... You know, that's again, we talk about it all the time on the podcast, the idea of the suits and the guys who run the numbers and that don't know anything about how to get people excited about anything. They just do the safe option and pick, oh, what might make us the most money with the least risk, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and we talk about all the time, but um, there's no need for me to beat on that dead horse now. Yeah. So. It was also because these updates, they weren't paid updates. They were all free updates, so they weren't making any money off the game. Which is why the next-gen release was a planned thing mm-hmm. that they were doing so they could make money off the next-gen releases of the of the game, and yeah. people would have bought it. Mm-hmm. I know they would have. And, and there was more content that was planned for the game that was prequel-related. There was Mando stuff coming, and... We almost had Ahsoka and we almost had Padme in the game. Very yeah. sad. Almost had Mustafar. Maybe in another world. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe in Battlefront world. 3. Maybe in Battlefront 3, which I it is never going to happen. It's never gonna happen. I can say with confidence, which is, again, why I think back to the Respawn thing. That's why I think that Respawn was given a shooter title. Mm-hmm. Because they can do it different. Mm-hmm. That'll be awesome. A fast-paced shooter game. You know what I hope it's not, though? It's all in the era of the Empire. I hope it's... Please, God, don't make it Galactic Civil War. I've had so many games that I've played (laughs) that are Star Wars games that revolve around the Galactic... And it doesn't need to be Clone Wars, either. You can give me High Republic, you can give me Mandalorian Wars, you can give me Old Republic. Just give me something that's not Stormtroopers against Rebels. I'm Mm -hmm. so tired of playing... Because it's the most identifiable thing. Because it's the safe People option. look at a clone trooper and they go, oh, the stormtrooper? Mm-hmm. It's the safe option. It's the thing that everybody everybody wants you know, to do to be safe. Because it's the thing that's, yeah, again, most recognizably Star Wars. But I like how uh, Respawn games run. So I feel like it would just be fun anyway. If well, it was Respawn, that Respawn's mode. company was built off taking risks. So hopefully the EA ownership of respawn doesn't hinder that too much Mm -hmm. 
So. We'll see. We'll see. What do you think you would most want to see out of it then if you don't want it to be Civil War? What would you want it to be? I would want it to be one of two things. I would want a game that has not it like Rainbow Six Siege, but a game that's very much team oriented. Mm -hmm. It's like objective based and team oriented. So you can't it, it, like it wouldn't just be a game that you just run and gun and single handedly defeat the entire enemy team. So I, Star Wars Hunters. I would want to. <laughs> I would want to play a game that's like super tactical. You know, you have to think about your every move and strategize with your teammates. You know, whether that's through proximity chat or whether that's through you know just a just a forced game chat or something like that, so that you are cooperating with your team. I love playing games with with my friends, and I love playing with other people. That's when I have the most fun playing a game. That's mm -hmm. not like a story driven game. I think people are gonna hate me for saying this. But, uh, I think that's an awful idea for a Star Wars game. I like games like that, like Siege, and though I have not played Siege in some time, just because of the recent updates to the game, Star Wars has never been tactical like that. I feel like that completely takes away from the feel of Star Wars and grounds you in real life. Not necessarily. I would, I mean, I would choose, like, they weren't expecting special forces. Oh my god, That's gosh. pretty tactical. I would choose, like, and yeah, it could be multi-era. You could do, like, Inferno Squad versus like Bothans, for example, for the Galactic Civil War, Republic Commandos versus like Commando Droids for or Assassin Droids for like the for the Age of the Republic, and even like the Resistance. You could just have like I don't know. You could put Sith Troopers in the game for all I care. You know, it's something where you could customize each character and have it be like very personalized. I feel like if I was going for something like a tactical version of any Star Wars game, I would want it to be like a redo of like Republic Commandos. But multiplayer. But like multiplayer yes. and like Siege, I think would work pretty well. And I also think that, you know, a game not like Call of Duty, but Titanfall is a very good, fast paced, smooth first person shooter. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that in Star Wars. Smaller maps objective based team team on team whatever you want to do just make it a game where there's a ton of character customization there's a ton of weapon customization i a blaster customization i want that mm -hmm. that's what i want more of from a shooter yeah. game i, I think, think that'd be super cool i think a star wars bla battle royale would be fun and i know people are going to hate me mm. for saying that because people like absolutely <laughs> hate battle royales but i'm just I, tired of them I, I I um I wouldn't want that. I don't care. I still love battle royale. You know, if you want to do a fun. battle royale mode in a in a shooter game, I'd be for that. Yeah. I don't want the focus of the game to be yeah. entirely battle royale. Or what if I it was just it. goofy? I mean, like if they did in a theoretical situation where they did a battle royale, because think of Apex, do it like that, but mix all the errors, mix all the characters, just make it so stupid. It's like Fortnite, but because in my opinion, so it just Hunters. makes it fun. So Star Wars, Star Wars Hunters is not a is that a battle royale game, Jacob? You keep no, saying but it's, it's like, a team based thing. But it's a team based. It's like Overwatch for Star Wars, and literally one of the characters is two Jawas in an overcoat. Okay, but I'm just like it's Apex easy. ported to Star Wars though. Just change the character. This is Overwatch ported to Star Wars, but it is team based battle, which is what Tommy was talking about. How he wants like a team based game. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, I, I do have faith in Respawn and I do trust that they will make a good game. Because again, they have not disappointed me before. I have loved all of the games they've put out. I would say that Apex Legends is my favorite of all the Royale games. Apex is my least favorite game probably on this planet. That is the only thing that I do not like that Respawn did. But also, <laughs> Apex exists because EA bought respawn yes. and wanted them to make a counter to fortnite yeah i like that it expands the universe of titanfall but i just don't like playing the game that's fair it's that's, all right i mean i stopped playing the game after like two months i don't like the fact that everybody in that game is a bullet sponge i feel like yes, all the that's, guns that's just deal no damage at all whereas in titanfall there's weight to it and warzone that's why i like warzone is because i feel like different weapons have different effectiveness at different rates. that can also be the most infuriating thing about Warzone. Well, just you and the bad. boys are yeah. just you're running just... through the terrain and all of a sudden just, you're dead, you're, you're dead, dead no. you're dead. Well, this is your bad. There's nothing you can do because a fellow that was just sitting in a bush 150 yards away 
stoned Tommy, everybody. What we were doing is that we were crossing what's called a linear danger area. Now, when you're crossing <laughs> a linear danger area, the United States <laughs> Infantry Handbook states that you should specifically have Stop one soldier talking. go across. Stop <laughs> talking. Stop talking. Cover, I'll, I'll pull up the manual. Cover to cover, cover to cover. There's a difference between cover and concealment. Mm -hmm. Jacob, can you tell me the difference between cover and concealment? <laughs> Even I know this. I'm gonna kill you. See, <laughs> cover will it. stop a bullet concealment, Mom. <laughs> what? You, you don't say. <laughs> conceal this, Jackson. Conceal this. Oh, oh. Read between the lines. Read between the lines. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyways. Anyway, so there's more Star Wars news that isn't video game related yes, so, as well. Yeah. There's going to be a behind the scenes of Obi Wan Kenobi coming out on September. I was week. really hoping they'd make one of these because I love mm -hmm. watching those gallery episodes. Those are fun. And but this one seems to be advertised as its own film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the Star Wars gallery where it's like, it kind of focuses on like this part, this part. I think this one's focusing mostly on the fact that. It, the continuation of Obi-Wan's story, it's focusing on like the roots of the prequels and transferring it over rather than just like the the technical side of everything. I think it's going to be more about the story side of it, which I'm excited about. Because that's how a lot of the galleries have kind of been. It's just like, whoa, we used the 360 projector and the Unreal Engine to do this. It's like called the volume, it. Jackson. Put some respect on the name. 3D projector. But the gallery stuff would be getting the same if they continue to do that. So that's why I feel like this is appropriate to do something different. In I, the story. I did like the Book of Boba Fett one. But that is they good. showed the Cad Bane's practical look mm -hmm. and how they were able to achieve yeah. that. I do enjoy those. Yeah, That one was cool. Yeah. It's very neat. Very cool, very nice. But yeah, I'm excited for the Obi-Wan one. Yeah. yeah. That'll be a must watch. Comes out what? Tomorrow? Se September 8th. September 8th. I was like, that is not tomorrow. Whoa. It's a long way. A couple weeks. Mm. Not that far away. And we are going to see Rogue One. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, if you would send me the money. Please. We should talk about the date again, like how I put in the chat and then everybody ignored the text. But we could talk about that after. We could talk about So glad that you had to bring that up, dog. Um, <laughs> What's up, dog? <gasps> not much. Oh, the sound effects aren't working. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Why is it so long? <laughs> that was uncomfortably long. Anyways. Um, yeah. Is there, what else do we got to talk about today? Is there any more news? I don't know. I don't know that there is. We don't have an itinerary this time, if you can't tell, so. Yeah. It's, just, it's off the dome, folks, today. The dome. Um, I do like my freeform Star Wars, though. Mm. Uh, ATTE, Lego ATTE, still haven't been able to find that Joan anywhere at all. Um, Which one? The regular one? The no, the um, ATTE the, Jackson. The Lego Duplo one. Yeah, dog. The Bionicles one. Sorry, boss. You mean the one that's yay big and not the freaking. That's ATAT -AT Jackson. Not oh, ATT. -AT. -AT. Yes. First day on, on Earth over first here. First day on the Star Wars my podcast, bad, guys. My bad, fella. Went to Taiwan. He, he dumped out all of his Star Wars knowledge for his I don't know. That was gibberish. But it was in Taiwan. So maybe you should have just gone there. But it was almost. It was $183 in their currency. Yeah, I think it's 200 here. It was 130 on the website. There's no way they upped it from 140 to 200. No, on well, Lego.com it said 130 because that let was me check luck. this. Because Obi Wan Starfighter there was also marked up to being like 60, dollars but in the U.S. it's cheaper. It's only, Go on Lego.com. It's 130. It's well, it's 140. Okay, I thought that Joe was gonna be like 240. I was gonna I say, was I was like, there's no way they upped it from 140 to 200. Yeah. Price hikes, dog. They come for all of us. I don't think that they price hiked this one. No, they... I'm pretty sure it could have been. This is just the after effect of it. I think they just kept the price at what the price hike would be. That's, That's fair. Yeah. I don't think they were gonna like have it lower and then well, be like, uh, oh, you ain't gonna get it. That yeah. set has had me tempted. Yeah, it's it out of stock. Very it's had me tempted, but I will not collect Lego. You yeah, because no. you will know, like, because last time he was like, "Oh, there's Lego set. I like it." He bought it and then sold it. Yep, that's what I did with the gunship. Mm -hmm. Bought it and I sold it. Yeah, so um, like an idiot. And at this moment in time, I've come to the fact that because I'm commuting to school, and after two days of doing that, and 
I have a five hour gap between my classes and I don't really have anybody that I know that has like not classes during that gap. So I just kind of sit there by myself. Does I my need sister to have class. Oh no, your sister just sleeps in. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Yeah, she's her classes start at two and she doesn't wake up till like 145. I told Damn. I told I think I told you both the story already, but my I sister, need a good car. My sister had the police called on her and her roommates. Yeah, yeah. Less than 48 hours of them being on campus moved in for the first time because one of their roommates is crazy. And now she's gone though. Now she's well, no, she's still there. In the I room? thought she moved out. No, guess she didn't. Not yet. They're still working on it. Oh. Uh, Oh my gosh. But, uh, anyways, but no, the moral of what I was saying is I really need to get a good car. I really need one. So I'm, I'm just buy four one wheels. That's yeah, kind of dude. Yeah, dude. That is kind of factual. Duct tape them just all together. No, four of them and just have like a pod racer. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, my collecting is definitely going to take like a hold for like a little bit. So no more pickups. That's all right, dude. That's all right. I'll just buy them for you and be your sugar daddy. Whoa. 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 I'm just trying to grab his wallet with my teeth. In terms of upcoming Black Series figures, too, we don't really have a lot at the moment, which I'm fine with. I know Yak's posting that some of the stuff is reaching uh, United States warehouses like the Amazon Cad Bane and some of the other ones as well. God, I'm so glad that I don't have to just keep dumping money into pre-orders right now. Cause I, we, yep. I got hit with so much stuff in this past month. Kenobi was way too hard because there was so many figures at once that it was just really painful. There was Kenobi, there were exclusives. There was all this stuff coming out all at the same time. Cause it was the, granted, thankfully it was at the con and whatnot and they didn't do much afterwards. So I guess now it's just waiting no, in my opinion for, Hascon, for really just, just wait till Oh. Yeah. I might cough up 50 bucks and get my premium membership back to go in that uh, premium members only stream. I'm going to be honest. But, oh, okay. Yeah. The premium member stream is a good idea. But like, there's no other decent um, perk of being the premium member still, in my opinion. Because even when they're like, oh, the premium members will have exclusive access to these figures. Well, they did get they did get access to the, the Blacked Out Boba Fett. They did, but then it was still available. And I got it came back later. It came back every single day if you had like the code um, during the Comic Con, but you had to have the code to get it, and then it was that up by true. a fluke on the first day. But we were able I got to, one. Yeah, I know it came out randomly when I was in class because that was the fluke. It just came out like at midnight. Yeah, because I was on my break and I saw it. And I was like, it's definitely not morning in the United States right now. Did you get it? No, because I was in class. Well, I think I got you one. You did give me one, so I was thankful about that. Yeah. But isn't um, George Lucas and even Paz Vizsla still like available too? George Lucas is totally going to go on discount. He's oh, been yeah. available on Amazon. Every I had day. I had two pre ordered actually. I had one. I had one ordered couldn't... through a fan channel, but I can't get my money back. Oh, what? really? Because it's one of those smaller fan channels that like needs is it... money. No, I'll, I'll text you later. Oh, I'll just okay. which one. I don't want to badmouth people on All the right. show. But... Nerd Zoe! Oops. No. You said it. <laughs> was it? Yeah, I went to get my money back uh -huh. and it was like, sorry, you have to wait till the order processes. So, sorry, my like, basement damn. flooded. So until the, until the damages are repaired, I'm keeping your money to repair my basement. But at any rate, the reality is that Hasbro just doesn't care about smaller yeah. like fan channels like his. Mm. Unless you're buying it straight from Taiwan or straight from china or hong kong or wherever else yeah. you're not you're not getting your figures before especially before like entertainment earth big bad mm -hmm. toy store dorkside toys you're just not so yeah but just wait until we open up the 1313 toy stores where you can get all your nope. big toys and accessories and blah, 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 blah. that would be a headache and a half but it would also be super cool like selling legos action figures i don't think i don't think we could ever do lego lego say. is such an expensive brand to carry yeah that's true. i think we we could we i feel like we did like hasbro stuff and just like star wars hasbro stuff that'd be bandai cool. model kits <laughs> but yeah my point was is that i had two ordered through dork and the orders never got filled even after um pulse got it so i canceled the quantity on both just because I was like, I guess I'll just wait if it's going to get discounted eventually. Like, not a lot of people are grabbing at this. I did get the uh, John Favreau figure, 
So that was cool. And I already have Dave Filoni. So I'll have the three creator figures soon. But it's just, in my opinion, if no one's rushing to get it, I won't rush to get it. Right. Because I also don't feel like it's going to be crazy expensive on the aftermarket. I mean, like, realistically, maybe if it suddenly sells out for some odd reason, like George Lucas dies, then like, then like people would buy it up like crazy and then try to resell it for a whole lot just because it's- George Lucas figure. just died? Oh my gosh, I gotta get to eBay and sell my figure for $78. No, for real, people would do that. <laughs> people would be selling anything. Never people mind. just preying on George Lucas to croak every day. <laughs> so that. Thank you, Reddit, for this wonderful notification. Yeah, I can't read. Well, it's gone now. I'll keep them entertained in the meantime. But I can't read. Tommy, are you illiterate? I Thankfully, again, like I was saying, we don't have to worry about a lot of pre-orders until Hascon, which I would be very surprised. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I would I feel confident in saying that they'll reveal the next wave. If not available for pre-order that like week and whatnot, available soon. Yeah. Like with the uh isn't it the ninth sister? The witch is the, the fourth sister. Fourth sister, pardon me. Fourth sister, the Grand Inquisitor, and whatever <laughs> else is supposed fourth to be. The fourth one. My bad. <laughs> and whatever else is supposed what? to comprise in that way, what like Yachty Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> Except she does it with her head tails. <laughs> she just turns around. No. Wait, because she only has the two, so she does this yeah. with it. Does it Somebody draw, draw that. How many somebody get, somebody draw that. Get on it. Get somebody on get it. Get to drawing. <laughs> Such a funny meme. Uh, yeah, dude. Hey, I got something to say. Okay. I got something to get off my chest. Uh -huh. And I, I didn't realize that this was like something controversial. What? Until like in Star Wars. Like I didn't realize that this was something that like made people like have a lot of discourse about it. That's cool. But I just need to get it off my chest. Okay. The pod race scene is too long. I don't agree with that. I think it's fine. I think but it's fine. great. I was watching Sarlacc Digest's last episode, and they did this thing where they did like a like a, a shout out to Sarlacc Digest. We had Scott Solo on the show mm -hmm. um, from Sarlacc Digest. So if you want to check that out, check out our discontinued Have a Chat series, which we'll bring back at some point. Lord knows when. <laughs> um, but. They were doing like this wheel of death thing where like they would pick all these controversial Star Wars topics. Yeah. And, like there was stuff on the list like Rose Tico, Admiral Holdo, The ah. Last Jedi. Like they just had them all there. And I was like, oh. And one of the first ones they did was the pod pod race. And hmm. they're all like dudes that are in like their 40s, 50s, you know. And so they're in the older generation of Star Wars. And they were um most of them were like, yeah, it's awful. It's too long. It's terrible. It's it's way too long. They showed the whole race and they didn't need to show the whole race. It yes, was just did. like, it was like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, it may as well have been like a 500 lap race because they were just showing the whole what? thing. I was like, damn, y'all are being harsh on I that. I love and the pie. I've never, I think that that's probably the most exciting part of the movie aside from the third act. Yeah. I that's, agree. That's probably because some of the most exciting you stuff You have to happens. see the whole thing to understand the emotional impact that goes with it. And I'm going to keep it real, okay? I love The Phantom Menace. But there are certain Star Wars movies that I will watch no matter what mood I'm in. And there are certain Star Wars movies that I have to be in a certain mood to watch. Yeah. The Phantom Menace is one of those movies that I have to be in a certain mood to be like, yeah, I want to sit down and watch this. That's me with Whereas like, the clothes. Let's see. I same. Agree. If it's Revenge of the Sith, if it's for me, mm -hmm. The Last Jedi, A New Hope, even like The Rise of Skywalker, if it's Rogue One, any of those films, I would just be like, yeah, damn, any like any day of the week, I'd sit down and watch that movie. Like, you know, like, I just like those movies and you know, I, I don't think any of them have any slow bits, um, especially not The Rise of Skywalker. That movie has no time to be slow. <laughs> but yeah, I guess like, you know, you watch The Phantom Menace and it's like, damn, like I feel like I'm like just chugging along until I get to the pod race. And then it feels like everything picks up after that. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, I can watch any of the OT movies. Like I can just throw them on and it's just, it's like normal. Yeah. Um, I don't, when I watch the prequels, it isn't as casual. I have to. I, you I don't Revenge know. of the Sith? Yeah, I can't. Well, that movie makes me sob every time I watch yeah, it. I just I can't throw on. 
I just like it, it's my favorite movie of all time, but I can't just throw it on. It's like I can't just throw on the Batman. It's one, another one of my favorite movies. Bum, I, bum, 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 bum. But no, like so, <laughs> <laughs> I can't just like throw that movie on because I I think it's I want to give it my full attention the entire time. It's not as casual as just doing on the others. And I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. The longer and longer the sequels are out, I feel like the less and less I like them. Whoa. I feel like the more, I feel like the longer they're out, the more I feel like I am becoming more, not critical of them, but I'm acknowledging more of the faults that they have. Whereas when stuff first comes out, because I am, not a Star Wars shill. I'm just someone who just really loves You're Star Wars. Tommy's a shill. You're a shill. I'm someone who like I'm I'm so excited about there being new Star Wars content that when it comes out, I'm just so immersed in the universe yeah. and in the characters that I'm just like like I don't know. You can throw me dog poop on a platter, put Star Wars on the top, and I'm gonna watch that thing, and I'm gonna be like, dang. That was Star Wars, and it takes me a little bit to like come down from that like and like, Catholic on and, Christmas. and watch it, <laughs> yeah, and like watch it and analyze it again. You, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. when I analyze it, that's why like when we when we do like uh, weekly episodes about like new Star Wars shows, yeah. I always try to watch it twice because then that second time I watch it, I'm I'm checking for all the stuff in the background. I'm like checking like the plot and stuff like that mm -hmm. a little bit more. Whereas the first time, I'm just allowing myself to be immersed in the story. And so when new Star Wars content comes out and I see people being hypercritical of it uh, on social media, I'm much more apt to share my two cents on it and be like, well, you know, this is how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as stuff is, it marinates and it's it's out longer, I, I start to get a little bit more objective about my feelings about the films and stuff like that. I think it's... Um it's probably nostalgia that's doing it for me with the prequels and the OT. It's just the more like people be be like, you want to watch episode seven? I'd be like, yeah, not right now. It's like I don't know. I really feel like I have to be in a mood to watch the the sequels. It's I, I it's not that I don't like them. It's just that to me they really don't feel like Star Wars movies right now. Hmm. That's that's where I'm at. They just kind of it. Maybe it's because George Lucas wasn't involved. Maybe it's because it's kind of updated graphics to like today's standards and they didn't really do anything different. I don't know what it, I think it's because it feels like it has no soul to them. I think the Mandalorian has soul to it. I think Book of Boba has soul to it because it was in the hands of people that really, really loved the saga. And then those three movies were just the mouse's cash grab of we have the property now, let's make money off it. I think it's more for me that they didn't do anything to push the filmmaking. It just felt like a blockbuster movie with Star Wars slapped on top. Yeah, I agree. That's what it felt. And that's that's what, because Star Wars is so... Innovative. Push, innovative and pushing the bounds of filmmaking. I think that... That's kind of where I'm at with and it. And that's where, that's why the Mandalorian, in my opinion, is like one of those things that exceeds and it's like so visually appealing because it's like, yeah, they're still doing some things the same way as always, but they're working on a smaller budget. So they're like, so how do we get around these things to make it look just as good? So they start using miniatures again. They're using the volume for all of their sets. So they're innovating the way that green screens are done. And you can tell because when the guy has the giant shiny armor, all the ref reflections are accurate. You, it, it would be so easy to tell if it was a green screen or a blue screen because that entire costume would have like a blue hue to it. And you'd be like, oh, he's on a blue screen. It looks like he's on a blue screen because it's so hard to mesh something silver into something that's blue. You get problems with that in Attack of the Clones in the, in the pear scene with, uh, Anakin and Padme. Oh, that godforsaken pair. In the in the where she just in the glasses on the table, you could see blue, like dark blue reflections from the blue screen that they couldn't key out, and you would be seeing that in the Mandalorian, but you don't. So everything feels like it's actually fledged into the scene. Everything feels like more tangible. So I feel like that was another thing that was missing from the sequels. Everything just kind of felt like like it was just kind of. I wanted to just share something completely random and completely off track because I just just popped in my head. Um, my uncle, who is a huge Trekkie, huge Star Trek fan, 
He's been watching the podcast for like a couple months now. So shout out Uncle Ange. But he uh, was telling me that for the next Star Trek project, that the composer for the whole thing is the composer of Jedi Fallen Order. Interesting. So I said, oh, that'll be cool. I said, you, you all have a pretty good score then for that. For that, for that show. Maybe because... your show won't be as boring as it is before. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that um, uh, Ludwig Gordonson mixed Childish Gambino's last album? That's cool. I know. Cool. That's cool. Mando album. Mando. Uh, let me just say too, I think the next mind-boggling, you know, reality-shaking Star Wars project, I could say with confidence... It's not going to be Andor. It's not going to be Bad Batch. It's not going to be any of these other shows. I think it's not. I'm going to say that Ahsoka is going to shake the fandom more than Mando season three. Interesting. I'm going to call it. I'm, this is my, my hot take I right think, here, right now. Is that I think Ahsoka is right going to do it about more than Mando season three. I think you're right about it shaking a certain part of the fandom. I think Mando season three is going to shake the new fans. The fans that have gotten into it just for the Mandalorian that like are invested into the Grogu, the baby Yoda stuff. Grumble. So, Grumpus. So, <laughs> Ooh, Grumpus. Uh, also, can we just take a moment to reflect on the fact that that Lothcat is eating Grogu? <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. Uh, but no, I definitely think that Ahsoka is going to go hard. It really, I'm so excited for that, that show. show. Yeah. The more I see about it, I'm like, oh man, this this is going to be something special. Something way different. I mean, if you just watch Dave Filoni's episode of season two of The Mandalorian with Ahsoka, that's something that's just so different, but it's so incredibly Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I could watch that episode by itself as its own thing again and again and again and again like when i pick episodes to watch like I, I don't know about you guys but like if it's the clone wars mando anything i normally will just pick one episode to watch and i'll sit there if i'm like you know cleaning my room or doing whatever organizing something um working on something i'll just put an episode on in the background and i can just kind of watch it passively mm -hmm. and it's always either the second to last episode of season two of the mandalorian okay. on morak where uh, what they really need He's a order. <laughs> then with Mix Mayfeld and all that, I pick that one most. And the one I pick second is the Ahsoka episode. Yeah. Or I pick the Boba Fett episode. Those are a lot of fun. Those three are the ones that I always jump to. And there's a reason for that. It's because of the filmmaking. It's because of the story. It's because of the acting. And that Ahsoka episode has all of it. The atmosphere. Everything about it. It has Western. It has Samurai. It has, you know, it's, it's Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You know? So... I think that that having Dave Filoni at the reins, giving him his first real project in live action is a, is a test to be certain. You know, I'm interested to see how, going how so. it goes. He's I gonna. Think I, I think he's gonna do great. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I love that man. I'm biased, but I think he's mm -hmm. gonna do great. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. Another thing I'm really excited for is Acolyte. That I haven't heard of much about it. And that makes me more excited. Yeah, I I think uh, Acolyte's gonna be great. You know what I did here. I don't know if this is true, but in the rumor mill, uh, it's not true. Star Wars Twitter always has Christian Bale will not be playing Star Killer. Please stop saying that. Star no. Wars Twitter always has the semi-reliable information. I've, more more times than not, I get spoilers and leaks from my peoples on Twitter, and uh, I did see that most of the show is going to take place on the planet that inhabits the species that Darth Plagueis is. Hmm. Which means possibly we might see Darth, Darth Plagueis. Plagueis as a character in the show. And I will say I do think, I remember when the show first came out there was this whole thing going around about like the show was going to be like it, it was going to only feature female characters. I remember that was a thing that people were crying I about online. And that, I mean I, it's something I heard about, and I, I know that that's just not true. Um, so if that's information that you've heard, disregard. Mm -hmm. If I'm keeping it a buck, though, when I hear the the name Star Wars Acolyte, I don't know why just a female character comes to mind for it. So You know why? Why? Because the Night Sisters are... Um, there's a whole class of them that are called Acolytes. Think the of the dudes Wars. from Destiny. You do? They, no. 
They are completely different. No. Please tell me why, Jacob. Let me look this up real quick. Jacob, the joke what? soared right over his head, hit a tower on its way. <laughs> what? Yeah, Tommy, do you do you understand what Jackson was talking about? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's what I thought that yes. you were, I oh thought you were mis- gosh, I thought you were Jacob. thinking that they were the witches the, or something. The definition like, oh. of the acolytes. It's um yeah. I, I think I think female characters as well, but I think the show's gonna be dope because it's about mm, the Sith and whatnot. It's about the Sith, and it's about mm, what is it, forty years before Episode One, something like that. I know it's well before Episode One takes place, but mm -hmm. we'll just have to see. I'm super stoked! So, I, I can't so. wait for all the new Star Wars content. Just like I can't wait for Andor. Every week we get a little closer. Stop. Every week I get a little more excited. I keep we'll bringing up some it. more news on Andor, and we'll be able to talk about that. So that'll be exciting. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go to the viewing of Rogue One, and we're gonna give you guys the scoop on what we thought of the sneak peek of Andor. I'm so glad that you opened up that water bottle directly next to the microphone, Jackson. This whole episode, you, you can you can move it away from the microphone. Yeah. Still pretty close. Um, I cope. Uh, cope. R.I.P. Audio listeners. That's <laughs> all I gotta say. Um, yeah, very yeah, good. Like with that, that we gotta talk about everything we wanted to. It's pretty today. much it. It's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Thirteen Thirteen Podcast, the most mediocre podcast in the Star Wars universe. If damn, you are doing like my jobs today. I'm out of the job. Intro and outro. The Jacob me. era is over. What? Until a couple seconds when I asked Jacob to tell us all about social media. But mm. if you are not yet, please subscribe to the 1313 podcast because we are doing that giveaway. Make sure you go check out that video. Check us out on Instagram. Jacob, lead us through the brass. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. If you like this episode, please leave a comment. Leave a like. Share with your grandma. Subscribe. <laughs> Make sure that you're also following us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh -huh. Link in the description. Also, make sure that you check out that video that we <laughs> Make sure that you check out that previous video for your chance to win either of those figures. And thank you all for getting us to 500 subscribers. We appreciate it. Also, make sure if you want to go above and beyond, make sure that you support us on Patreon for your chance to win that 13th Battalion Trooper if you are in our Gungan Boss tier. Or if you just want to support us any other way, we have two lovely Private tiers. Discord channel for Grand Admirals and Gungan that Bosses. True. And we have, and you get, you get early stuff in that, in that Discord. You get leaks on new projects that we have coming up. You sure like does, like you sure does. So if you want to have the inside scoop of everything that's going on here at the 1313 Complex, uh, make sure that you join that Patreon. But thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you liked it. What will it be, fellas? Mustard or ketchup? All right. I don't know why you said that, but. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys right. next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Da da da
ba 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 ba